masculine and feminine are not the same as male and female. They are the Latinized words that are used for man-like and woman-like. So, for example, a man can be called feminine and a woman can be called masculine. In anthropology, since about the 1930s, uh, there has been studies of the variety of role divisions between the genders in different societies. And a very important role here has been played by the young uh, female American anthropologist Margaret Mead. It's interesting that from the sixth dimension, this is the only one where it matters whether the information comes from women or from men. In the other dimensions, whether you collect your data from women or from men, you get the same position of the dimensions. Uh, the definition, masculinity is a society in which emotional gender roles are distinct. I'm not talking about social gender roles because they have a lot to do with the wealth of the country. But I'm talking about the emotional role, what you should feel being born as a boy or being born as a girl. And the boys should be assertive and tough and focused on material success and the women should be focused on the quality of life. Uh, I call a society feminine if this role separation is not there or it is weaker at least, so that especially men are also supposed at times to be modest and tender and focused on the quality of life. Uh, now I'm opposing feminine societies to masculine societies. Most societies are somewhere in between. In feminine societies, people try to balance family and work. In masculine societies, work clearly prevails over the family, and um, work is an acceptable uh, excuse to neglect the family. And family is, of course, not an acceptable excuse to neglect your work. Within the family, in masculine society, fathers should deal with facts and mothers should deal with feelings. And if the children are hurt, they should go to mama. In the feminine societies, both father and mother should deal with facts and feelings. So you may go to mama for facts and you may go to papa if you're hurt. Masculine societies admire the strong. Feminine societies are jealous of high flyers. And especially in the Nordic countries, Denmark, Sweden, Norway, they have a word for this, Jenteloven, it means the law of Jente. And Jente is a name of a little town from a novel that describes how the people in the little town were so jealous of somebody who came in, who was the author of the novel. In masculine societies, people disdain the weak. In feminine societies, they have sympathy for the weak. In masculine societies, girls cry, but boys should not cry. Boys fight, but girls should not fight. In feminine societies, both boys and girls may cry, but neither should fight. In religion, you have different religions or different flavors of religions. In the masculine society, uh, it focuses on God, God the Father, the powerful God, and in feminine societies, religion focuses on the fellow human being. And finally, obviously, it's also related to sexual relationship. And uh, you could say that in the feminine society, sex is a way for a couple to relate. Uh, in masculine societies, sex is a way of performing. And often it is so that man is a subject and woman is the object. Now... How do we measure the position of masculinity and femininity on dimension for a society? It can only be measured relative to other societies. And we measure it in a masculinity index, MAS, and the scale goes from zero for the most feminine society to 100 for the most masculine society. 
I have here a list of some 14 countries selected from the 76 for which we have scores. And you see that this country with the highest masculinity score is Japan. And also high on the masculinity side we find Italy and Mexico and China and Britain and Germany and the USA. And on the other side we find the Arab countries just on that borderline, we find France, we find Russia, we find Thailand, Costa Rica, Denmark and the Netherlands. Now, which shows that there is no relationship at all between the wealth of a country and masculinity or femininity. There are poor and wealthy masculine countries and poor and wealthy feminine countries. Now, what can we do with those mass scores? Well, again, we can correlate them with hard facts in society. For example, a few things that correlate significantly with masculinity and femininity. First of all, the percentage of people who are functionally illiterate, which means that they cannot read or write. Uh, in masculine societies, there are more functional illiterates than in feminine societies. But also, in masculine societies, there are more people living below the poverty level than in feminine societies. For the outside, masculine societies spend a lesser part of their budget on aid to poor countries. Feminine societies spend a higher percentage of their budget on aid to poor countries. There have been surveys to see what people blame poverty on. And in masculine societies, there is a popular opinion that poverty is blamed on laziness. It means that if people are poor, it is because they are too lazy to work. Whereas on feminine societies, poverty tends to be blamed on simply bad luck. In marketing, there is a difference that clearly Food shoppers are women, so advertising, for example, for food is done to a women public. In feminine societies, both men and women shop for food. And finally, uh, something about the relationship uh, between the employer and the employee, when they are negotiating upon conditions, then in masculine societies, salary is clearly more important than leisure. In feminine societies, it is at least as in leisure is at least as important as salaries. And in fact, feminine societies tend to have longer vacations than masculine societies. And at the last point, in the social media, it has been proven that in masculine societies, people use the social media for fact gathering. And in feminine societies, they use it more for rapport building, for developing relationships with other users. Do masculinity scores change over time? They are transferred to the children in the family with obviously father and mother as role models. And like for the other dimensions, the country differences expressed in the mass scores tend to be rooted in history. I have an interesting example from the 16th century, which is so some one author compared at that time the two maritime powers, Britain and Holland, and compared them to a couple where Britain was the man and Holland was the woman. This is still the position Britain is a masculine country and the Netherlands are a feminine country. The database that we used for comparing um, the generations on power distance and individualism collectivism unfortunately does not allow to compare the masculinity femininity dimension because it is the World Value Survey an American survey, and it does not contain in its questionnaire values related to the feminine pole of the dimension. And if you have only one pole, you cannot measure a dimension. In the USA, the word femininity is a taboo. USA is, of course, a very masculine country. 
And what is a taboo? A taboo is an expression of a very strong value, a value so strong that the word should even not be used. So, my conclusion is that for lack of other evidence, I consider masculinity and femininity at a societal level as stable as the other dimensions. Thank you.